quite common that customers or clients ask for projects to be created with their type of order rather than your own. Um, in this example the client has given me a title border and the title border also contains a viewport and they have specific attributes and the attributes can't be changed or we can't add an additional WD underscore TB attribute to the title border because that affects uh, their existing system. So how do you make this intelligent? Well, there's three parts to making a title border intelligent. One is to map their attributes. Two is to add wire types. And three is to define the electrical standards, i.e. properties, uh, to the project so number one if we go to schematic and we go to wire types in this instance we've defined a load of wire types already and you can see they've uh, been brought in the other way that we can do this of course is we can import from an existing DWG that you might already have we've also defined within here if we just highlight some of these also defined within here the colors of the wires as along along with the size and um, uh, layer name and what whether it's numbered etc so that is number one number two is we define the drawing properties so the drawing properties are what numbering system it adheres to the wire numbering system the cross-referencing methodology the styles and the drawing format in this instance you'll notice that for the cross-referencing format I've just used a very simple percent %s value standing for sheet because this particular client doesn't have any columns or rows in other words it's not in accordance with EN5457 obviously you have to work with what you're actually provided by the client so either you could make the cross-referencing just a very simple percent %s or you could use the utility on the insert YY numbers pane to actually insert an XY grid within their title border, assuming that the client allows that. If they do allow that, obviously you would then have to define what the width of the columns and what the width of the rows are within the setup of the XY grid. Once you've done those two, the next bit is actually to look at the attributes that are in their particular border. So we've looked at those particular attributes and I've also made sure that within the example client border template project, I've created a file called default underscore WD title which is the line values that you see when you right click over the project and go to descriptions. And I've basically typed in on the line values the fields which I would consider to be project related fields. Such as job number, site reference, etc. And these tally up to the actual fields or attributes that are defined within the client's border. This basically means that the descriptions that I see within this particular client's border, I'm also going to see within the descriptions of the project. Once I've done that, I can go to the project ribbon tab. I can select title block setup. And where normally I would recommend method two, where the um, mapping actually is inserted at zero comma zero within the title border, we're going to use a project specific WDT file. A WDT file is a text file, but it's the mapping of the title border. And we can basically pick a block. So if we pick a block as an example, and I can say OK. I can then start mapping what I consider to be 
certain fields within here. So as an example, job code number. job description, job description 2, site unit number, and we basically go down um, this set of attributes until we've filled them all in. So as an example, we might have a last rev here client rev now quite often title borders from clients can often be made up of more than one block they might have as an example a title block and they might also have a revision block so these can be mapped um, um, in addition to what we've just mapped here so I've mapped those particular fields but it was quite clear that the title revision fields weren't in and they're a separate block in this particular instance so if I go back to title block mapping and this time I'm going to edit and I'm going to add a new block and I can pick the block and then I'll continue mapping obviously making sure I don't pick the same attributes again our fields again so in this instance revision one the reason for the revision who's done the drawing who's checked it who's approved etc and I continue these until we've basically mapped all of the attributes now as I mentioned this is actually stored inside of a WDT file so if I open up this WDT file, you'll see that it's got two blocks mapped within here. It's got the block for the revision information and it's got the block for the title border information. Once you've done all of that, so that's the title block mapping, the wire types and the electrical properties, this title border is complete. Obviously, if it is in in paper space with a viewport just make sure when you're doing your drawings you work in the model you work on one to one you do not uh, scale it because otherwise you're going in accordance with IEC 610H2 if you just save the drawing as a DWT using file save as that is your border or clients border completed